former graduates of Chai High High School in Lindstrom, Minnesota, and we're going to learn a little bit about the history and, and capture the memories that people who are in junior high don't even know what Chai High is. So we're going to tell them all about it and capture those memories, so we're really happy you're here. Okay, go ahead. I'm Mary Schmitz, maiden name Nelson, Mary Nelson, and I was in the class of 47. And it was Chai High then. Chai High. Mm -hmm. yep. And I'm George Nelson, not related to Mary Nelson Schmitz. Uh, I was graduated in 1968 from Chai High. Mm -hmm. And I'm George's sister, Marcia. And I'm Marcia Smith, and I'm from the Chai High class of 1960. And I'm Keith Carlson. I'm from the Lindstrom Center City Schaefer Chai High class of 1967. And I'm Diane Johnson Lundquist, and I'm the class of 1959. Oh, what a nice mix. Before we get started on our memories of Chai High, any of, did any of you go to a country school, or do you remember the country schools that fed into Chai High? Yes, I did go to the country school. It was called Panola, and it was about a half a mile from my home, which was a farm, and walked to school. There were three, two boys in my class plus me, and I went to that school up until sixth grade, and at that point, then we were all bussed up to Chai High. Okay, anybody else? Did you go to the country school? Well, we were in the Deaton School District when I started school, but my father was a school bus driver, and I could ride with him to school in Lindstrom. And I, I don't know if he had to pay tuition for me or not, but I would have gone to Deaton School, and it was it was closed shortly after. Where was the Deaton School? It was up, uh, what's the North Branch Road? 14. 14. Lincoln Road. About a, uh, a mile north of Highway 8, okay. and on a corner up there where, um, what's there? Um, up near where the Chisago Lakes Town Hall is now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And, I didn't go to a country school as such, but both Keith and I, and Marsha, did you go to Schaefer? Mm -hmm. Keith and I went to Schaefer Elementary School, which was just grades one through two. There were two classes of first graders, two classes of second graders, and a lunchroom in that building. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was very unique, and uh, had nice big woods to play in and uh, in the background, and it was pretty magical for, for first and second graders to go. And my, and my class actually was the largest class, and we went to, half of my class went to Schaefer for third and fourth grade as well. So I went to Schaefer for first, second, then I went to the, the Chai High School, and then I went back to Schaefer for fourth. So half of my class stayed in Schaefer un until fourth grade, or through fourth grade. Hmm. How big was your class? Well, my graduating class had 76, but, no, but back in the I, I don't know how big the class was. It, we, we had, part of the reason for it was the, the addition, which, which was done to the school, Diane, we can talk about that later, that was done while, I think while I was in third or fourth grade, oh, yeah. and then, then the school became bigger. So there was just that one, that okay. one little Because there were 12 time. grades in that, one big square school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where the administration buildings are now. Sure. Yep. Okay, so because people can't, you know, young people, even the people in the middle school don't realize that that used to be a high school. We're, today we're gonna sit down and tell them and bring them back to what life was like at Chai High. Does anyone remember their school song? Oh, sure, of course. Hail of course. alma mater. Did it ever yeah. change? Nope. It was the Northwestern fight song. Yep. Yeah. Can anyone sing? Sure. sure. George. Oh, right. One, two, come. three, go. Hail alma mater. Hear thy children sing. Praise the glory to the honor of thy name we sing. Rah, rah, rah. Hail alma mater. Fighting and striving to uphold the honor of the gold and blue. V I C T O R Y. Victory, victory. Chai High. 
Do you remember any great cheers? Were any of your cheerleaders? Or? Diana. Okay. Diana. Diana, do you remember a cheer? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> there. Okay. Okay. Well, I remember one cheer because in the pep band, we did. Clancy Linvall was our band director, and uh, he directed all the bands. And I think when you guys were, he did choir too. Yeah, yeah. Well, in the pep band, he'd have little cards that he'd hold up when you were at games. Here's what you're doing, and he'd have little ditties that you'd play, and then there'd be a cheer. And one of them was the Double Mint song. Okay, give, us, you, a, give you, us a sample. You, well, the Double Mint song used to go double your pleasure, double your fun with Double Mint, Double Mint, Double Mint gum. So the band would play that tune, and then the cheerleaders would do a, do a cheer off of that. Do you remember the cheer for it? Mm -hmm. It was after us. I think that was oh. after my time. Okay. <laughs> I remember but that playing was, that song, but I don't remember what the cheer was afterwards. Do you? I don't. I think it used to be da 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 da, go go da 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 da, fight fight. I thought da 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 da, go something like that. Fight win. That's probably it. It usually was. So where to jump in? Anything? Tell me something memorable about your high school experience. Well, I was in the first class to have any classes in the new West Wing that uh, protrudes from the original Chai High building. And we were pretty excited to have a science lab in that new structure. And I remember my math classes too. It was, and we also got to have noon hour dances in what is the lobby. And, uh, and my that was in high school? In, as a senior, yeah. <coughs> that was the first year in that. And my granddaughter has told me that they have grand uh, dances there now. In the middle school. In the middle school, yeah. Really? Yeah. And what did they do for music? We, we must have had a record player, you know. Yep. It was vinyl records. Yep. Sure, sure, so, sure. Yeah, oh. and of course, we had practiced after school to American Bandstand at somebody's house. Dick Clark. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. So How about then, the rest of you? What, another memory, just something off the top. We have lots of questions, so. Well, I'll jump in. Uh, one of my memories, when they built the new high school, the year before that was completed, I, I was in third grade and Marsha was a senior. Mm -hmm. And I could see Marsha on the same floor where my third grade class was down at the other end of the school. And I remember seeing her down <laughs> on that end of the hall, which was quite amazing <laughs> as, a, as a third grader. And yeah. then when they built the new wing, the new high school, it was considered, it was really spectacular for us. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, it was such a nice, nice facility compared to the cramped quarters that we had at that time. Sure. And, and when it got finished, as I recall, and I was just there fifth, sixth, and third grade, but w once you got to seventh grade, then you moved into the new building. Up to that point, you That's stayed right. in the old side. So mm -hmm. it, was, it was segregated uh, up to sixth grade. Then seventh grade was a new experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about you, Mary? Well, uh, I graduated in 47. And during my high school years, it was during the Second World War. That ended in 45 in Europe, and I'm sure it went on a couple more years. No, no. August Japan. 45 in, in Japan. Was it the same yeah. year? Yeah. Oh, OK. Three months. And there was gas rationing, for one thing. And, uh, but other than that, not having gas, uh, nobody had cars. None of the kids had cars. We all came in by bus. and. Um, I remember going to my senior prom, and my date didn't have a car, and my dad lent him his car, which I think now was pretty pretty great for an all-night <laughs> thing. Really? Yeah. But he was very dependable. Glenn Frost, I don't know if any of you remember him. But uh, yeah, so, um, and I have got a paper here on all the things we didn't do or have back in those years. But it's, um, like we handed, well, we didn't have television, penicillin, polio shots, frozen food. You don't want me to go through all these. Keep going. Okay, it was before credit cards, radar, laser beams, ballpoint pens, <laughs> patty hose, dishwashers, clothes dryers, electric blankets, air conditioners, and before man walked on the moon. Yeah. We got married first and then lived together. <laughs> <laughs> How quaint can that be? In our time, closets were for clothes. 
not for coming out of. <laughs> Bunnies were small rabbits, and rabbits were not Volkswagens. Designer jeans were scheming girls named Jean or Jean. <laughs> and having a meaningful relationship meant getting along well with your cousins. Do you want more? <laughs> we thought fast food was what you ate during Lent, and outer space was back of the Riviera Theater. We were before house husbands, gay rights, computer dating, dual careers, and commuter marriages. We were before daycare centers, group therapy, and nursing homes. We never heard of FM radio, tape decks, electric typewriters, artificial hearts, word processors, yogurt, or guys wearing earrings. <laughs> For us, time sharing meant togetherness, not computers or condominiums. A chip meant a piece of wood. Hardware meant hardware, and software wasn't even a word. In 1940, made in Japan meant junk, and the term walking out referred to how you did on your making out, referred to how you did on your exam. Pizzas, McDonald's, and instant coffee were unheard of. We hit the scene when there were five and 10 cent stores, and we bought things for five and 10 cents. Sanders or Wilson sold ice cream cones for a nickel a dime. For one nickel, you could ride on a streetcar, make a phone call, buy a Pepsi, or enough stamps to mail one letter and two postcards. <laughs> you could buy a new Chevy Coupe for five, $600, but who could afford one? A pity, too, because gas was 11 cents a gallon. <laughs> In our day, cigarettes smoking was fashionable, grass was mowed, coke you could drink, and pot was something you cooked in. Rock music was a grandma's lullaby, and aides were helpers in the principal's office. We were certainly not before the difference between the sexes was discovered, but we were surely before the sex change. We made do with what we had, and we were the last generation that was so dumb as to think you needed to have a husband to have a baby. <laughs> no wonder we are so confused and there's such a generation gap, but we survived. What better reason to celebrate? Oh, thank you for <laughs> I think we handed these out at a 50-year reunion or oh, something, yeah, sure. and I kept it. I'd like to get a copy. You know, if I could piggyback on that, yep. as the next generation up from Mary, you know, the United States growth in wealth and in industry in post-World War II was, is unbelievable yeah. historically. No, no time in history has ever exhibited that kind of change and that kind of growth in any country in the world. And we as the baby boomers were the benefactors of that. As Mary mentions, yeah, nobody had cars. Mm -hmm. Well, we were the happy days group, mm -hmm. you know. My dad didn't allow my brother and I to have a car, which we really didn't like, because we both worked all the time and we had money. We could have bought a car, but he wouldn't allow us. But Keith, you think back to the cars that our friends had in school. I mean, it was unbelievable. That, that was the hot rod days. And uh, uh, lots of horsepower, and, and that's what noise. kids drove. Dro noise, Hollywoods and glassback mufflers to make that wonderful sound. and. Uh, that was the difference just in that short time from World War II until when Keith and I grew up and, and Marsha and Diane too. I mean, that, that was an explosive time. When she mentioned that uh, they didn't have electric typewriters, it flashed back into my mind. I remember learning to type, it, that was the business class, mm -hmm. on a manual yeah. typewriter, yep. you know, and then the electric typewriter came in right then. So then we had to change and use the electric typewriter and that change in touch was really something so to easy. get used to. Yeah. <laughs> and learning how to type on a manual to have the right pressure on your mm -hmm. fingers so it didn't show up light and dark was a, a real technique to learn. Mm -hmm. But they still had manual typewriters when I took typing, which mm -hmm. was... Mm -hmm. They had a mixture. They had a mixture, yeah. So it was good to learn manual, both, so yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> you, did you learn both? Well, eventually I used a manual, or I mean an electric, but yeah. it started out, I, I really remember only having a manual in, in Ethel Montgomery's typewriting class. Ah, oh wow. Well. So Diane, I haven't heard from you. <laughs> <laughs> what are, any great memories or something memorable about your high school experience? Well, in 1959, which was my senior year, uh, as a class we got to go to Chicago. That was our trip, oh. and we went by train. And that was that was a highlight. Oh. Was there always a senior trip? No, no. but <laughs> I, it started I think in maybe '57, Carol's class, and my class had a trip too. And that was in, we didn't get to have a prom. We didn't get to have a prom. We didn't get to have an annual. 
but we got our trip to Chicago on a bus. And, and they took us on this tour of the slums, and I <laughs> always thought, why? <laughs> I guess. The, the, the senior trip, George, you probably remember, I think it was the class of 65 was the last senior trip. So I was 67, so two years ahead of me. George's and my brother were the class 66. That was the first class that didn't get a trip to either Chicago or Win Winnipeg were yep. the two places that they went. But you heard of these stories of behavior that probably wasn't all that commendable, so <laughs> they cut it out before George and I got there. And uh, but we we took a, a bus trip. They, they, they well, that was probably wise. They gave us a bus trip to. We went up to uh, Cragen's Resort. We did oh, too. Wow. Uh, so instead of going to Winnipeg or Chicago, we went to Brainerd. Brainerd. <laughs> <laughs> That was probably more fun. <laughs> well, it was it was fine, but it was it was go up and go back the same day. And it was. Oh. It, it, well, in my senior <laughs> spring, we had a skip day, and that's what everybody did. And we went to St. Peter to go through the asylum there. Oh my! Which I was scared to death, and I was going to sit in the bus. But oh. some of the boys said, "You can walk with us." Yeah. And then from there, we went to the Excelsior Music Music Park. Oh, yeah. And uh, I can't remember in between. I'm sure there was lunch and something. Did you bring a bus? A bus load of kids. We could all fit in one bus. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you just already jumping to that prom and dances and homecoming. Now some of you said you had prom. You had prom. Some of you said you didn't. Did you all have homecoming? Yeah. Yes. yes. What did you do? What was homecoming? What it was always basketball it? game homecoming. Yeah. It was the was last. It, it was the last yeah. game before Christmas vacation was homecoming, right after the mm -hmm. basketball game or that weekend, mm -hmm. and it would be out at the, well, the, the the school. It would be on the gym floor, the the wooden floor of the basketball, the, yeah. yeah, where where that was. Mm -hmm. A lot of decorating show, and. And yeah. they'd show movies of the of all the previous classes. Mm -hmm. Arvid Victor had a camera from years before, I don't know how early, and took pictures of each one walking out the front door. Seen the movie, yeah. And do you have that? Uh -huh. Yes, because I know Alan Walgren worked it up so everybody would have, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm guessing that George, did my grandfather, did he uh, video your class? Yep. So he, he maybe did it, I'm guessing, through the class of 69 when consolidation took place, but I don't, I don't know that for sure. Because I remember it was back to J.C. Victor and, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I remember my mother was in one of those. Yep, huh. yep. And, and she was a class of 41. Mm -hmm. So no. how did, did, you go, did you have dates for homecoming day? Was there yes. Yes. dates yeah. after, yeah. Right. after right. Day? Yeah. You had dates? Did you dress up? Oh, but yeah. you didn't have to have a date okay. to go no, to the dance. I well, the, the homecoming, actually, I believe it, the coronation was during yeah. halftime of the basketball game. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the dance was actually the next night, I believe. Am I no. wrong? There? No. It was the same night. Was it the same night? After the game. No. Yeah. Our, our, our <laughs> class was the first class to do have football as the oh, homecoming game. Well, you yeah. we, we switched that. Class of 68, so it would have been the fall of 1967. And uh, hmm. we, we wanted to have it for football. Hmm. And um, so we, we both my, my class and Keith's class, did not have proms. And we lobbied Elder Larson, who is the superintendent, you know, first of all, to have homecoming for football. They allowed us to do that. And then we wanted to have a big dance. And Roger Branson played in a band called the Marvelous Marauders, who were oh, yes. tremendous. Uh, they toured the whole Midwest, and it was kind of a show band with brass and. And he's a local boy. He was a local mm -hmm. boy. He played the trumpet in that. His, and it his was, father it was, and Steve Relic had the hardware store. Yeah. I didn't know that. So, that was three hundred dollars to have the Marauders, and Elder Larson was just, we can't spend that kind of money. <laughs> and we convinced him, my get me and I that. Not only should we do that, but we'll make money on it. This won't cost the school anything. It's our money anyhow. It's the class money. It's yeah. not the school districts. And he begrudgingly gave that up. We did have the Marauders, and we actually made money on the dance because so many people came, yeah. and it was tremendous. But we tried. We lobbied for prom, and he would not go down that road. And his reasoning <laughs> was really sound at the time, and I didn't appreciate it as a 16-year-old, but I do now. He said, there's a lot of kids that can't afford prom. Mm -hmm. He said, it's not right to marginalize those students that can't afford it. And it was true. And 
uh, it didn't ring home with any of us at the time, but looking back, true. it's still true. Yeah. This idea of spending hundreds of dollars for mm -hmm. one date is kind of insane, and it keeps getting more and more insane. But yeah. that's kind of an in interesting time period, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have something to say? Maybe? Well, another thing I just thought about, uh, I was a cheerleader, and we, I think this was 58, where we, uh, as a basketball team, were in the playoffs. Oh, yes, we are so proud of that. we had to go to Hibbing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And right. it was a horrible, horrible snowstorm. Blizzard. It was a blizzard. And Marsha had helped me recall this, because we couldn't remember if a bus even went or not, but we decided that a bus went for the, the band, band. But, but not fans. Not fans. The rest of us had to go by car. Okay. And so that's how we got up there. And it's something that was. It was <laughs> like the best team we had for two, well, two the decades. And the, the, ne know. the next team that went to the, this is the, the region basketball tournament, was George's junior year and my senior year. George was on the basketball team. I was in the band. And we went to Duluth. And it was Lindstrom Center City against Hibbing, Virginia, Duluth Central, and Lindstrom Center City. Now all those schools had Chisholm, not Chisholm Hibbing. Was oh, a big oh, one. Chisholm, yeah. No. But they were they're all larger. Mm -hmm. That was when there was one class in all activities in the yeah. state of Minnesota. So you had one basketball champion in the whole state. One baseball champion, one golf champion in the whole state. So getting to regionals was huge. You had sub-district playoffs, then district playoffs, and if you got to regional, you're down to the final 16 teams in the state. It, you know, and it's pretty, it's a big deal. What year was that? 58 was the one we remember with the blizzard. The blizzard was. And ours was 67. So between 50 and 67, no team got got to regional. Got to move. So did you have a particular, like, what was there? secret sauce for the teams? I mean, did you have particular stars? Or yes. Just mm -hmm. great teamwork, good coaches? Wow. Great, great, certain stars for sure always for make sure. it up. Lyle Nelson is a name that stays in memory <laughs> for sure. And, and for 67 it would have been Jeff, Jeff Barrett. Barrett. And Jeff Barrett. Jeff, Jeff Barrett was, uh, mm -hmm. went on to be the captain of the St. Cloud uh, basketball team. St. Cloud on. State, you know, Minnesota mm -hmm. State St. Cloud, yeah. I remember Jeff in college one time seeing in the paper he scored 100% for St. Cloud State, both from free throws and field goals. Wow. He, yeah. So, Never missed a shot. So what sports did they have for girls and boys? Oh, yeah. Very <laughs> Nothing. Very That's a short little. answer. We Cheerleading. We, well, but that we was started, it. Margaret Hawkinson started a GAA, Girls yes. Athletic Association. Uh -huh. So we would stay after school and, and play volleyball once a week. <laughs> that, was, that was your sport. That was it. Yeah. But well, if you had study hall last period, you could go out and sit on the hill and watch the boys play boys baseball. Play baseball. <laughs> <laughs> there was nothing for my age group. But did you have cheerleaders? Yes, we had cheerleaders. Okay. Yep, three of them. Uh -huh. Three? Three. I've got a picture here of three. Oh, yes, really? we didn't <laughs> have big staffs of cheerleaders, yeah. no. We didn't but, need um, and my girls graduated from Chai High or Chisago Lake in 72 and 73, and they didn't have sports then. Yeah. So it was really? after that 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 Title VI or whatever nine. came in. Oh, nine. Nine. Yeah. nine, Title it was, nine. it was under Nixon, I think. Yeah. Oh, please. I'm okay, serious. so what boys sports <laughs> did you have? And what, what, what boys were sports, sports they had we, everything. we had uh, <laughs> football, basketball, baseball, track, cross country, and golf. I think that's, that's it, isn't it? I started when I was a sophomore, George was a freshman. Yeah. And, and I think part of the reason that we started a golf team was that our, our principal, Conrad Gustafson, had a little <laughs> yeah. par three golf course where <laughs> Elms right. Estates Mobile that's Home right. Park is. That's right. And well, that was maybe part of it. He had a little bit of an interest. And then North Branch, when I was and George were in school, North Branch won the state golf tournament again. It was one yeah. class. 1964, 1965, and 1966. They were the three, they, they had a three-peat for this small little school. I remember going down watching them play at the, at the state golf tournament they played at the University of Minnesota. And uh, they, would, they would play against Stillwater, Edina, you know, these big schools in North Branch ran away. 
and they had probably 60 kids in the class. Really? Isn't that something? That yeah. Is. So you had football, basketball, baseball, track, golf, and, and cross country. Well, when did swimming start? That was after the was pool here. got built here. Oh, that's right. My son was, uh, oh, he was on the first, uh, that's right, my, Buckley was on the first uh, swim diving team. He was oh, a, yeah. a diver. So did you have any favorite coaches? Oh, yeah. Hadley Ward, I think George is going to say. And yeah, absolutely. I would, I would agree. George and I did, we were on the football team together. He was a star on the field. I was the star guarding the bench. <laughs> <laughs> so what made Hadley Ward special? Well, <clears throat> enthusiasm, I think. I, I, I always said that he loved us and we loved him. And I, and, and I think that's what made him special. You knew he cared about us. He was a disciplinarian, but he, he treated us like we were his sons. Everybody, I think, felt that way. And um, uh, had a lot of interesting quirks. He always spit on his hands, so <laughs> nobody wanted to shake his hand. But, uh, but uh, he, would, he was just uh, such a likable guy. And I'll give you an example of, of Headley when uh, I'll never forget this one. Mike Gatenby and Bob Skoog and I <laughs> cut study hall. Uh, signed out for the library and, and then headed down to the locker room just to visit for the peri study hall period. And we're sitting in the locker room just talking and we hear the door open up so we snuck into what was the drying room where they hung all the sweaty clothing and stuff on and had fans blowing and we're sitting underneath all this stuff and all of a sudden the light flips on and it's Mr. Ward, Edley Ward. He says, what are you guys doing here? said, well, we signed out for the library and we cut out. He said, you can't do that. If somebody catches you, you're going to be in all kinds of trouble. Now just stay here and behave yourself and don't do this again. <laughs> so, and I, lo I love the line, well, if someone that, catches, catches you. Yeah. Well, we were just caught. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, so, like yeah. you say, like a, he treated you like a That's son. He did. But and, when uh, you wanted to give your best effort for him, sure. because you really wanted to do the best you could sure. for him. And I think that's the secret of all those special Coaches. teachers. Mm -hmm. You didn't want to disappoint them. Uh -huh. uh, the ones like that that you just loved. Okay. And, uh, so, speaking of teachers, what classes did you I should mention one more coach. Go ahead. Dear Dave Schneider. Yes. Dave yes. Schneider yes. was also a guy, just tremendous character and such, treated people so well. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the school was treated well by Dave Schneider, and he was a baseball coach, he was a basketball coach, he was a football coach over the different years that he was a teacher here, and he taught through Chai High years into Chisaga Lakes years. And one of the things I remember so well about Dave Schneider is the kids that weren't great athletes and the kids that didn't have all the privileges, he treated them extra special. He also taught Fayette, and I remember him pulling certain kids that were on the edges. Uh, I won't name any names, but, but he treated them extra special over anybody else. He, brought, he lifted them up, and uh, I'll never forget that. And I really realized it as a kid, watching him do this. He treated that's, everybody so that's well. A, that's a nice testimonial, yeah. something like that. Okay, so favorite classes or favorite teachers is the next topic. Mm. <laughs> Well, when, when I am asked that question, the first name that would come to my mind was always my fourth grade teacher, Valeria Friedel. Oh, okay. All of us know her well. Mm -hmm. And she was kind of like Dave Schneider. She taught everyone like almost like it was her own child. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was just kind. Uh -huh. I remember back in those days, I remember her class specifically. We would always pray before, oh, before really? lunch. Oh. Did you have Valeria Friedel, oh, mm -hmm. George? I don't know if it can I didn't remember the praying. But I, I remember that because we were in the Schaefer School. We were in the downstairs. Oh. We were in the basement. That's where we had the school. Now, maybe it just happened to be because we were in the what was essentially the lunch room. That, that's where we had the class because oh. they were crammed. Oh, yeah. So may, maybe that's just what was mm -hmm. why that went on. I don't remember that any other class, any other year. And that isn't why. Yeah. But, I she, liked was her, but she was just. I just, she mm -hmm. was my favorite, at least elementary teacher. I, yes. I have to say my remembrance of elementary teachers wasn't all that fond. But in her, case, in her case, it was yeah. different. And there's an oh, yeah. article written by her in this Lindstrom Centennial book about mm -hmm. her rural school days. 
Sure. Yeah. Okay. So how about the rest of you? You must have had a favorite class or a favorite teacher. I'd like to hear from all of you. Well, for me, it was Mr. and Mrs. Randall, Chuck and Mary Randall. And, and Chuck Randall was a math teacher, so I had him for the higher math classes, like trigonometry and higher algebra and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I like math. Mm -hmm. And his wife taught English when I was a senior. And she introduced novels to English class, and that was awesome. Instead of all the grammar and so on, we actually would read paperback novels and discuss them at a level preparing you for college, you know? How about you? What do you have? Probably was my home ec teacher. Her name was Mrs. Satterstrom. And we just hit it off. Oh, I know her. There were times when if she had to go do something, she would put me in charge of the class. <laughs> uh -huh. I do remember that just she now. Must have liked <laughs> I, I, I'm a little like Keith. Uh, a lot of my elementary teachers, I don't have fond memories of Val, I do. Um, but the first teacher that really lit up my life was Helen Schofield in seventh grade. and. Um, there was a lot of negative motivation in our younger years, and it was a little bit of the times, I think, of mm -hmm. um, focusing on what's wrong rather than what's right. That's and, what they thought was discipline. And, <laughs> and uh, Helen Schofield operated differently, and she started in seventh grade, and she taught all the way through the high school, seventh through twelve. She touched a lot of lives, lifting them up, um, uh, and made good students out of a lot of kids that really didn't like school at that point because she allowed them, she, she taught health and social studies. And, uh, and then- Phi Ed, girls Phi Ed. Girls Phi right? Ed, yeah. And, um, and then Jim, I, Jim, did she teach Swedish? When my, uh, yes, Helen Fosdick, you're thinking. Oh, oh yes. that's right, mm -hmm. you're right. That's right. And then Jim Iverson in choir was a dear man. He died too young. He was, he was just an angel of a teacher, a great, great guy. Um, Started and, our community choir, adult yeah. choir. Yeah, and Bernie community. Buss was an English teacher who was such a, I taught when I got out of uh, college, I said I did initially, it was teach school. Bernie was a role model for me. And Bernie was a very meek, quiet, me, I don't mean that in a negative sense, it sounds real negative, but he was a very quiet man. Ne never raised his voice mm -hmm. in class. And, but you knew when you walked into his class there was work to be done. He was well prepared, and he taught us how to appreciate Shakespeare and things that we had never experienced before. And and they stayed they stayed with us our whole life. And he never had a discipline problem. I always remembered that. And the reason was, as soon as class started, teaching began. You knew when the bell rang, there's things to be done. And uh, that was part of what I always remembered as a teacher: is be prepared, start immediately, don't waste time. And, uh, and that's what Bernie did, and he was great. And his whole class was pretty much him lecturing from the start of the class to the, till the end, other than when you were taking a test, as I remember. One of the unique things I remember he did with Shakespeare is he had L LPs, records, vinyl oh. records. And reading Shakespeare and going from our traditional prose for a kid is really a leap. And you're trying to get back on these lines and it's not flowing. So he would turn on the LP and you would read mentally as the narrator was reading it and is like, ah, that's how I learned that ionic pentameter. <laughs> and it's like, now it makes sense and I learned to really appreciate it. And that was a neat te technique. I, I'm trying to think, but I can't write offhand. You didn't have a I didn't class. delve into what, that what here. What classes did you like the most? Lessons? Well, I liked English, and we had English lit, so I mean, we had novels, mm -hmm. and besides yeah. the grammar part mm -hmm. sessions were, and uh, um, so I liked uh, the reading part of it too, and um, oh, I don't know, I, I, it's a long time ago. It's over <laughs> 70 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Almost forgot Sig Steeny too. Sig, gotta mention him. Uh, they, he was our chemistry and yeah. physics teacher, and, uh, and biology biology mayor of Lindstrom and yeah. did a lot for the community. Great teacher, great man, yeah. wonderful man. Yeah. With him, he'd always say, make use of the time. 
I mean, there would be about 30 seconds left before the bell, but everybody look it up. <laughs> Sig expected you to work until the bell rang. That's awesome. Yeah. I don't think, when I, when I look back on the country school, I don't think, I think the teachers wanted our respect, not our friendship. I think it was different mm -hmm. than when you guys, you well, know, they finally got wised up and... Well, there were demanding teachers, and, and I, I think fondly of them, Glancy Linval. Most people that know him mm -hmm. think he's demanding, and he was. Mm -hmm. but, but you knew that you, you needed to be prepared, and he did get you prepared. Mm -hmm. So I, I do appreciate him, even though as a child or a youngster, you maybe don't appreciate quite that. I see you talking things. about men teachers mostly, mm -hmm. so maybe. We, we did have mostly men, yeah. you know? Well, we, we, and we got closer to them through your sports, for one yeah. thing. Yeah. Well, and that even certainly helps. as far as yeah. when I started teaching, the women still got paid less, you know. <laughs> well, we had men teachers once you got to junior high. Prior to that, I remember It was all person, women in the elementary. Conley, yeah. 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 Conley was the only man that yeah. I remember that taught mm -hmm. from first through sixth grade. None of us had kindergarten. Right. So, uh, Elementary was, was women, and uh, yeah. for uh, later on, French and Nordica Moline taught, but you, you know, otherwise it was mostly yeah, men once that. you got right. up to right. seventh okay. grade. So, later talk. Lunches. What were lunches like at Chai High? They were great. I thought ours were good. I never mind. Hot them. lunch? A lot of I, I, I liked them. them. Yeah. So, did they make hot lunch every yes. day? Yes. yes. Hot lunch yes. every there day. There were cooks downstairs. Mashed potatoes they made. with hamburger gravy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's right. That, everybody took lunch on certain days. I know. But it was good. Well, yeah. they, they later on gave you a schedule of what was uh -huh. going to be for lunch, but early on you didn't know it was going to be for lunch. Uh -uh. And I remember being in the Schaefer School because, again, we had fourth grade and it was essentially the lunch room. And they'd bring lunch and you didn't know what it was going to be. And, and it was somewhat of a a little bit of an uncomfortable, you know, I wonder what they're going to feed us today because because you it, it, you just, you were supposed to, you had a choice. Whatever they had, that's what you had for lunch. And you didn't know what it was. Yeah. So sometimes you try to guess. And, Could uh, smell it cooking. <laughs> there was a little bit of a concern sometimes when they brought the food. They made a great, great peanut butter cookie for, and it was big. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that was really nice for growing boys in high school is at that time you had unlimited milk and it came from the Chisaga Lakes dairy in little glass bottles, pint bottles. And you could have as many as you want. So some of us high school boys, you'd have six bottles of milk for lunch. And you had as much bread from the Lindstrom Bakery as you wanted and peanut butter was in a bowl and jelly was in a bowl. So if you didn't like what was the main course, you could have six peanut butter sandwiches and six glasses of milk and you were good to go and sometimes we'd wrap them up into uh, <laughs> napkins <laughs> and tuck them away and put them in our locker for after school because we had practice and and Mrs. Nielsen who was the head cook when I was there knew we were doing that and she'd just smile and wink and yeah. and uh, so did they cut, how much were lunches? Do you a quarter. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, you, used to, you used to have a punch ticket like Chicken. 20 punches yeah, and sometimes right. it would be like I think it was. I start. I think it started out at fifteen cents. I think you got twenty punches for three dollars. Then it went, then went to four. four. You're right. I it was can't. five. So I think. I think. I think a quarter was the top amount. I think so. I think it started out at fifteen. And you cents. might get. You know. You might get two barbecues for yeah. for that twenty cents. Yeah. Plus all the other yeah. stuff that. Yeah. Well, that the, barbecue hamburger was a good one too. Yeah, I never and had that. Uh, hot dogs and. <laughs> I know we had peanut butter sandwiches. If yeah. you didn't like what was over yeah. here, there was always the yeah. peanut butter sandwiches. And there was, there was, a there was homemade dish. cookies, yeah. too. Uh -huh. yeah. they, homemade they, cookies, so they made the cookies there, <laughs> like ginger cookies and uh -huh. sugar cookies and things like that. Yeah, and they made you know, everything. Up through sixth grade, we would have a milk break in the morning. Yes. The Lindstrom Dairy, uh -huh. Bob Swenson, would bring out, would bring out uh, Case. I think they put it outside the door in well, a, they, uh, he, little cartons. Yeah, he would bring yeah. it in. No, it, it would be the glass bottles. Yep. That's oh, really? We, we were glass cartons. Oh. Glass bottles. Well, I suppose we were. So that was I'm sure they, they were <laughs> milk cartons. No. no. 10 in the morning. So we had a, a mid-morning milk break. Uh-huh. Okay, so what was a typical weekend like? School's out. It's Friday afternoon. What, <laughs> what did you do on the weekend? Well, it depended on your age. But then we're talking Kids, high school. High school. 
Well, I lived on the farm, and so when all these city kids were <laughs> out having fun, I was either driving tractor, mowing the hay, or we were baling the hay, especially on the 4th of July. All we it was always had to do haying on the 4th of July <laughs> when everybody's in town having fun. <laughs> well, not completely. We always had to clean on Saturday. Saturday was clean the house day. <laughs> well, and also, we sometimes clean things like chickens. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, just because we're the butcher's kids. Yeah. Well, I, I worked in a grocery store every Saturday, the Fairway store in Lindstrom, right? During my high school years and even one year after uh, first year of college, yes. And then Sunday was Sunday school or mm -hmm. teaching or choir yeah, or church. church and yeah. mm -hmm. So the kids didn't get together like on Saturday? Oh, yeah. Day. Well, it depended well, on where you, lived. where you lived. Diane was yeah. out there. Yeah. And the main date activity yeah. was to go to St. Croix to a movie. Oh, yes, that that's was about it. St. Yeah. Croix at the theater <laughs> then. Downtown there, that's yeah. Yep. yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Or stop at the Rainbow afterwards, yeah. 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 And, the, and the weekend started Friday <laughs> after school. You'd have either a football game that's or a right. basketball yeah. game. That's right. And, it was something I always looked forward to. Mm -hmm. Something going on. And everybody yeah. would show up at the Rainbow yes. Cafe after yeah. a ball game and mm -hmm. cheer on their conquering heroes that would yeah. walk in and yeah. you'd have your 25 cent hamburger and your mm -hmm. 5 cent Coke and, <laughs> and, socialize. and socialize and go from there for the night. And, mm -hmm. and uh, for, our, for our high school, like I talked about, it was really common for kids to have nice cars. Yeah. So if you think of the scenes from Happy Days <laughs> yeah. where they're cruising, we did a lot of cruising. To the loop. Your class did too. There were a lot of nice yeah. cars that. There was a car club in the yes. yeah. yeah. tea timers. Sure, one was yes. president of that. Yeah. The tea timers. The, the tea timers. Tea timers. It's a car club. How did you, just with the tea. Uh-huh. Dash you know, timers. Like, what did it stand for? I don't know where the tea came from. I suppose. They had a lot of uh, you know old cars that they'd fix up. Yeah. Back and then then there's some guys like Jay Norelius had the. Hardtop convertible, mm -hmm. yes. 58 Ford hardtop convertible, which he still owns, or he owns again, Does that same car. Again, yeah. And that convertible was quite a piece of technology where the hardtop folded up and went into the trunk of that car. Yeah, really, yeah. Candy so, apple red car, neat car. So, school's out. What'd you do for summer? Summer swim summer jobs? Pardon? Swam in the lake. Yes, I, I, Swimming lessons. I would want to go to the beach every day. I'd yeah. get my housework or my meat market work done as fast as I could so I could head to the beach. I just loved swimming. We had a nice beach with docks and a raft out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Water, beach water was skiing good. was big back in those days. Oh, yes, we had well, a water skiing club. Really? Yeah, time. Really? yeah there's, we've got some video of it on the fun flicks that we did, remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So did people hang out at the beach? I mean, yes. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yep. Which the beach was it? Was Lindstrom. Lindstrom Beach. Lindstrom beach? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even we would sneak down there after dark, but we weren't supposed to. But we knew how to hide under the dock. You know? it, it's, <laughs> oh, yeah. it's the same location as the Lindstrom Beach, except the, the beach was wider. Yeah. There the was lakes were low, I, I so you was, had a lot of nice been, sand beach. Well, it, it must have been like... A, more, more than 100 yards, maybe, oh, yes. maybe 200. Yeah. 200 yeah. yards. There was no brush growing up. Like and there was that nice now. big tree. It was wide and that again, beautiful like, yeah. tree. One big shade tree. Yes. Yep. The, the lakes that when we were in school were about were 15 low. feet in depth lower than they are now. Mm -hmm. So you had a lot of beach around the yeah. lakes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And uh, they were great. And mm -hmm. yeah, going to the beach in the summertime and going to the skating rink in the wintertime mm -hmm. was, was the, the two games. Panola. Yeah. Yeah, right. That was Yours the best was one. Panola. Yeah. There was one in Lenstrom. Ours was, Lenstrom. Yeah. Below, always had one too. Ours was below on, uh, it would be Elm Street and uh, mm -hmm. what's across Street? Mm -hmm. Sylvan or whatever? Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, and that's not right. a skating rink any longer. But no. as the lakes had to be lo a lot lower because I, for the when you took Red Cross swimming lessons, the final test for when you got to the level called swimmers was you swim across the lake all the way. We did that. Okay. What are you doing? Oh, South oh, I never heard of yeah. that. All the way across the There would be a, a lifeguard in a boat that would yeah. roll with you, oh. but you swam all the way. Oh my well, I never took life-saving lessons. I never got, oh. I never got that. I got I that far. Right? I knew how to swim before that. We also would play baseball in the summer. That was big. George oh, sure. and I played together. Yeah. Uh, his. Uh, it would be his brother-in-law that was Merle. a coach. Yep, Pearl and, Peterson. Uh, that, was, that was my first coach, I assume yours. Yep. And we so girls played badminton in anybody's yard and up on the roof of our, of our store. Sure. <laughs> Surprising we didn't fall off. 
So was it like, back to baseball, was it Legion type baseball? It was, was Little it? League. Little League and Pony League was the equivalent of a Babe Ruth or, uh -huh. uh, but we didn't go out and play in those, uh, you know, the Legion tournaments and that kind of stuff. So it was mostly same, same thing, Chisago County teams that we would play against. Uh, North Branch and Why, you, Wyoming, North Branch, Chisago City, Taylor's Falls. Mm -hmm. So that was your, that was one of my questions. Did you ever interact with all the other towns, oh, the yeah. people, the high schools, yep. dating anybody? Yep. Maybe? When we got old enough to date, we would go over and check but out the girls in Forest there was Lake. Huge and rivalry and between Lynchton and Chisago. That was the biggest. We rivalry. didn't even. It, it wasn't wise to choose a boyfriend from Chisago. No, really, no. Well, 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 they were the bad boys. You, you wouldn't know. want a boyfriend from Chisago. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I was a senior in, in high school, Chisago City's oh. bonfire, which they were proud of, they had it in the fall, their homecoming oh, was yeah. in the fall. And we went over and burned their bonfire about three in the morning. Before so, they had the chance to burn? Yeah. Correct. So then they then they got out of school and built the bonfire again. So they, they, they <laughs> did them a favor. The afternoon off. <laughs> so I guess you could say it was a friendly rivalry. But when you uh, when when people and I I was I wasn't one that brought the gasoline to the fire, but I was there when they were. Um, <laughs> I hate, you know, I'm just telling I'm just here. telling what yeah. it was. I, I was there. I wasn't an instigator, but I was an observer. And, um, you didn't stop them, in other words. <laughs> just well, I don't think they were waiting He's covering for, for himself. Oh, we would, we would cover uh, from Forest Lake to Taylor's Falls, basically, on when we're cruising around meeting people. I had a cousin who went to Forest Lake who was a year older than me, so we got to know a lot of kids from Forest Lake through my cousin Steve, played athletics against them and got to be buddies. And same thing with the athletics in Chisago City, we, we'd be definitely rivals, but we were buddies when we weren't playing and all in Taylor's Falls too. He was, Steve Turnell was a pretty famous basketball player as a, in high school from in Forest Lake. Forest yeah. Lake, yeah, our cousin. Oh. So we, we would uh, take the run of things and then we did a lot of diving off the rocks in oh, St. Croix yes, Falls. On the river. Yeah. When it was fair game, and yeah. as a kid yeah. on the Wisconsin side, it was a great place to learn how to cliff dive because yes. you could go from yeah. about five feet yeah. all the way up to 80 feet. Yeah. And you could get your nerve up, work your way up those cliffs. Uh -huh. And uh, I mean, we dove hundreds of hundreds of times off those. Really? We'd wait for the tour boats to come by maybe and then line up <laughs> and put on a show. Maybe we shouldn't be telling the kids that. Oh, they already know. Uh. <laughs> Actually, they have put up barricades now where we used yeah. to dive and they don't, yeah. Yeah. don't let them get to it that. Was, but. It was risky, but you know. That's where my future husband, boyfriend back then, lost my class ring. Oh, he had it on, diving he in. Oh, oh. So sure went. Down there. Somewhere down there. Yeah. I think the river is like 80 feet deep in front of those cliffs. It's oh, really it just deep. Oh, me out. Right. We got to have our class picnics over there at the Interstate Park. Oh, oh we yes. had yeah. picnics there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Lake of the Dalles was a favorite place oh, to go. Oh, yeah. great the water place. was always good yeah. there. That's where I took my swimming, swimming that's lessons. That's, that's right. Yes, right. uh huh. Yeah, at Interstate yeah. Park now. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, there was a beautiful lake. Beautiful. Lake. So did you, did you lose any classmates in high school? Uh, I, I did. I lost yes, I think in my junior year, her name was Marilyn Villeen. Oh, mm -hmm. And I think it was brain cancer. I'm not mm -hmm. that sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, you didn't mm -hmm. know that much back then. And she just was home from school for a long time and died. And, yeah. 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 So that was the first funeral I ever went to. And I remember that, yeah. yeah. Anyone else? My first mm -hmm. classmate to pass away was uh, right after, uh, maybe it was a year after high school, Jim Johnson had, is it? Multiple. Uh, or muscular dystrophy. Muscular dystrophy. That's so right. he yeah. died. Uh, he graduated with us, but he, he went to school through the fifth grade, and I believe in sixth grade, then he was homeschooled. He oh. came back for graduation and died I'm going to say, I don't think it was immediately the summer of our graduation. I'm, I'm guessing it was probably the summer of 68, if I had to guess. That yeah. was the first classmate mm -hmm. that died, uh, as I recall. 
So our, else? our first one was uh, John Eichton was killed uh, by a uh, driver that was driving out of his lane under the influence, TWI. Yeah. And On Halloween night. Johnny was pulling out of the yeah. school and uh, it just threw him up and he broke his neck on the mm -hmm. ceiling of, his, of the car. And uh, Debbie Ward, the daughter of our dear coach, Hedley Ward, uh, was with them, and yeah. that was awful. Yeah. That was terrible. And nobody ever got over that. You can tell it's still and emotional to think of it. And he came home from college to yeah. be in a wedding party the next day. Who was it that got married that? I don't remember. I don't oh. either. How about the war? Did some of you must have uh, overlapped? You it, uh, war too? There was a young man from my class that died in the war. Um, I don't remember him coming all the way through all our classes, and I don't, if he just was in our school for a short time. But he was, uh, yes, he died in the war. That's the only one that I had. So did you guys overlap the Vietnam War? We were in the I thick bet. of it. Yeah. Yeah. The Tet Offensive was the 1968, when we really ramped up. You know, the North Vietnamese came down and really put pressure on the South, and that's when Linda Johnson then really amped up the draft and it really took off then in 68. So did your friends, did you guys get drafted? Your friends get drafted? Uh, I got a, they started the lottery when I was a junior. George was junior a Junior in college. Nixon started the lottery and I got a high lottery number. My, my older brother Greg, who Jack knows, was a senior in college. And I remember sitting around when they had the first lottery, mm -hmm. and I was in a fraternity house at the University of Minnesota, and we all sat there to, listening for the numbers to come up, and oh, it was yeah. it was pretty uh, tense. intense. Yep. It was a Monday night, if I remember, and, and then they called off the numbers. Well, here's they, they here's the February 14th. A good friend of mine, Bill Johnson, I was he was about number three. So oh, as you as you knew the date come up, and you knew someone with that birth birthday. Mm -hmm. Well, fortunately, my, my brother and I, I, I think I had 294 and he had 323, so for ourselves we celebrated wow. that we weren't likely to go because Vietnam at that point, 1970, was not something that people were generally trying to get involved with. So it, it definitely hung over our... And they, one, one thing about the draft that a lot of people don't realize is every branch drafted at that time. When the draft went on before Vietnam and in the early days of Vietnam, it was pretty much army that you were drafted in the, uh, in the regular army. And uh, when the war got cranked up, every branch took people as they needed them. And my brother-in-law, Mike Kloos, was drafted a year out of high school to into the Marine Corps. And he served in Vietnam in some pretty tough, tough duty. And, um, uh, it was it was difficult. It was a trying time. Uh, the day we sent Mike off, our family was all together. To my wife Terry's family and the Cluses, and we uh, it was very yeah. much a tearful goodbye to send him off, and um, it was tough. And that, he made it back. He made That's it back. Correct, yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 So Mary, were you at the end of World War II? Yes. And did everybody come home then? To yes. Uh huh. And uh, when I went to college at St. Cloud, all the vets were back and going to school on their GI Bill, I believe they called it then. Mm -hmm. Yes, so um, they were, it was over. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Okay, so how did your high school experience help shape who you are over your lifetime? Well, I, both my husband and I always said we grew up in the best of times. Yes. It just was, I don't know, it, it really was. We, we didn't have a lot of money, but nobody did. Mm -hmm. And everybody, I mean, I, my high school, my school experiences are nothing but positive. It was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It, it was very positive. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, each year, senior year would have been the highlight, and then because you were the you were the you know the big dog in the school and uh, <laughs> you know the years before that were, were good also but it, it was very positive it, it, we had to study enough to have enough background to if you went on to college that you were prepared and so on I remember my first paper 
at the university, I heard about all these horror stories. They'd flunk you out and, from English or something, and then you'd be drafted and off to Vietnam. Well, the first paper I ever wrote, I got an A minus. So that, that had nothing to do with me. It's just Bernie Buss, who George talked about, he had us prepared so you know how to write a paper. Mm -hmm. And every time I wrote a paper as a freshman, which is, it, I'd, I'd usually get an A or an A minus mm -hmm. just because of, of the, the training that he had. And I, I also played in the university marching band. I have to thank Clancy Linvall for uh, whatever preparation I had because he was demanding enough that um, you were prepared. So it was, uh, it was a good and experience. Well, it just occurs to me that all five of us sitting here Live still live here, you know. It mm -hmm. tells you that we loved our our mm -hmm. home, and your experience in school is a big factor of whether you like like this place or not. That's very true. And uh, and I remember that in the uh, counseling session after the ACT test, when they counsel you about whether you should go to college and where your strengths might lie and so on. I I remember being advised that this academic staff was proud of what how they prepared us. And would tell, I remember being told that you can be proud and say that you came from uh, Chai Hai from Lindstrom City, Center City and they'll know that you had a good academic background. That's nice. I would echo what's been said before me that it was by far mostly positive. From a social standpoint, it was tremendous. Uh, my brother Pete, who passed away five years ago uh, last Sunday, um, and I, we used to always say we grew up in Mayberry. You know, that's, it was it was magical growing up here. The school was was good. I, I, again, I'll echo what what Keith said. Clancy uh, Linval as a band director was tough, and and uh, and yet I'm very grateful for the love of music that he developed in me, along with Jim Iverson. You know, it, uh, it stayed with me my whole life. The uh, Helen Schofields and Dave Schneiders and Bernie Bosses that we talked about previously were my role models when I, when I went off to teach of what to do. Some of the ones that I didn't consider as good at teachers were also my role models because they taught me what not to do. And I always remember something that I learned along in teaching and that is we learn from who we like. That's a fact. Uh, the idea of I'm going to be a taskmaster and whip you into shape doesn't work. Because if you hate the person that's your mentor or your teacher, the learning isn't going to be there. When they develop the love of learning, which a number of our teachers did, and it's a positive experience, it stays with you forever. And uh, so school was a very happy time for me overall, and, and uh, I love being a part of Chai High. Well, I'm just thinking that we didn't have much theft in the school. Oh, no. I can remember we hung our coats on a hanger out inside the door, our boots, whatever we had, we'd leave. We didn't have lockers. Nobody took anything out of the locker rooms when you were in gym or that. And I can remember being even a, when I was smaller and riding a bicycle, I could ride the bike up to the theater and leave it outside yes. and ride it home. And never thought of it being stolen. Well, oh. I forgot about Tri Tri Town. Tri Town yeah. Theater. I remember, sure. I remember Tri going there Saturday, to the last, 10 cent movies. I went yep. to the last uh, <laughs> showing of the Tri Town Theater, and it was the only time I ever went there. Oh. <laughs> so I was told, this is the last night of the theater. Well, that's interesting. I've never been here before. Where was it? Really? It was where right. Goldbrats and Jewelry. Downtown. You never went to the theater? Why didn't you go to the Saturday It closed movies? when we were quite young. Oh, did it? Was it? Oh, so OK, because it was yeah. there. Oh. It was right in that. Where we're right going to start printing, I believe. Yeah. Is, is that where it is? Right. Kai right. Gulbrandson's. Yeah, and it was a theater. How many people did it seat? Oh, oh, I don't know. Quite a few. It was probably a hundred. Real big. No. no. I, I know yeah, Alan Walgren used to change yeah. the reel, he told And me. they changed uh, <laughs> movies three times a week. Oh, really? Yes. Well, I think Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, mm -hmm. then maybe Wednesday and Thursday, yeah. and it's written up in our book, too. I, I think when, yeah. TV, when television became popular, then it when was they closed, the end of it, yeah. is my guess. But we still had St. Croix. George, you, you never went go to there, No, I don't remember ever going there. No. no. Again, I just remember. I remember the theater, but I don't remember going there. <laughs> no. Mary talked about not having a locker. Well, we had lockers, but we didn't have locks on them. No. You, you, e just either in you can store things in, but you didn't lock them. No, same thing. The hallways and the locker room for athletics. There was no locks on anything. Uh -huh. 
fact, we never locked our houses. Did you no. bring your cell phones with you then? <laughs> 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 you know, no. speaking of phones, this is great. When I was in third grade, Lindstrom got dial phones for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> that was a big deal to have switch automatic switching station that would handle dials. Before that, we had an operator above what was then Carlson's department store. Hold up. Huldah Lindquist. Hold up. And it was just like Mayberry where sure. she would have the uh, little mm -hmm. plugs that she would she'd have her little headpiece on and yeah. you'd ring the crank and she'd say, Hold it. Do number you know where please. Where my mom is this afternoon? Right. Wow. Well, I think she's at Bridge Over at Carlson's. She'd know. <laughs> well, and then we had party lines, and each house would get the ring for, we had a long and a short was our ring. Wow. And, but you would hear the three shorts, and some people would pick it up oh, yes. and listen yeah. to the conversation. Yeah. Oh, yes. You knew, probably yeah. knew and that somebody so was you knew, on your line. you knew who that was. Yes, and, that's right. And, the, and when you're on the phone, you better just state your business and get off the phone. You can't be talking on the phone for because more than Because somebody's trying to call. That's enough, yeah. <laughs> that is so oh, great. Yeah. So what, I, the one thing I, I'm looking over my notes, we missed a little bit about plays. Did you have plays? Oh, oh yes. yes. Great plays. Oh, yes. Yep. We had one act plays first when you were in 10th grade, then you had class plays for junior, junior and senior. senior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had class plays. Um, and we had junior and senior. Were you at, any of you ever in them? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. I think they tried to get almost everybody in them. We're all in them. Sure. sure. And then they also there weren't also, that many kid, kids was my age. one act you know. contest play afterwards. I, I don't, they must have been pretty desperate for actors. <laughs> like that poor Mrs. Montgomery, because we really, yeah. oh, I remember when we had, we did Rebel Without a Cause and Barbara Cohen and I had <laughs> this one line that, she had us keep trying over and over again. It's a long way down. <laughs> and we never, we never did get it to have the effect she wanted. <laughs> that was a big movie back when yeah. Marsh was in high school with James Dean. Yep. And uh, who was the pretty woman? Uh, who was she? Uh, she was the one that died in a drowning there. Yeah. Uh, Natalie Wood. Natalie, Natalie Wood. Wood and mm -hmm. James Dean, yeah. So that was, I remember that play, that was a neat play. Yeah. <laughs> so we had Jim Iverson did the junior play and the, and the one act uh, contest and so on, but Ethel Montgomery was our senior mm -hmm. yeah. play. She was Her, uh, when I was a senior, Jim and Ethel did it together. Oh, oh yeah. But he did our junior play and, and the one acts. You talk about where you win it. In a small, that's one of the beauties of a small school. Everybody Most did. of us did everything. Yeah. I mean. Band. Band, choir, plays, football, basketball, baseball, track, Beautiful. for me, Men, class boys. plays, one act plays. We uh, graduated 28 in my class. 28. Science 28. club, we were library club. How many in your class? Well, there were 80, but there were a few that uh, didn't quite graduate. So I, the number, I think, was actually 74. I, I, I used to say 76, but I think it was corrected to 74. I think 33 graduated. 33, how many graduated? And I'm like Keith, we, we had 64 in our senior class, but I think about 58 or 56 graduated. Isn't that something? And then you had still like uh, all the plays and going occasionally for yeah. sports to regions. Mm -hmm. And, and of course, we were all before the consolidation. Sure. So mm -hmm. we were mm -hmm. smaller than. And Chicago what's really Lakes remarkable, now. if you look at this East Central Conference of Taylor's Falls, Lindstrom Center City, Chai High, Chisago City, Rush City, Pine City, North Branch. You had North Branch that won those three state championships in golf. At that time, they were the best in everything, 64, 65, 66, and football, basketball, baseball, and it was the same kids doing the same thing. Yeah. Steve Johnson was a Minnesota yeah. amateur champion in golf, and he also was the best pitcher on their baseball team, and he was their quarterback uh, on their football team and the point guard on their basketball team. That's how all the schools were yeah. competitive and good enough to compete with big schools. Uh, it was quite remarkable. Yeah. And you had people that played multiple sports at the same time. Sure. Mm -hmm. They had baseball, track, and golf all going on at the same time. I, I, I liked to play baseball and I thought I was going to, but then they started the golf team when I was a sophomore and I, I happened to be the had the best score at the district, so I, I thought, well, actually, I'm probably better in golf, and I ended up, I wanted to really, I, I really liked to play baseball, but I just never played it in high yeah. school because 
I focus on golf, but then we did have people on the golf team that were also baseball. Bill Johnson, yep. Dale Larson, they would play. They would practice baseball, and then they'd come to the golf meet. Well, it didn't usually work out too well. Mm -hmm. I did all three in the spring. One, my senior year, football, bas or baseball, golf. track, and golf. And then, I, of course, I was gone every day to some event, golf meet, baseball game, track meet. And the teacher said, wait a second, no more of this, so pick two. So I picked track and baseball then. Cause, but it was a pretty good gig as a high school say, kid to say, I guess. <laughs> I'm <Yeah>. off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but in my era, the, the, they didn't, I don't know if anyone was limited, so. No. No, it was, and the multiple sports were the way it was done. Everybody did everything. Yeah. And we had band and choir. You can be yep, in both of those be because they were alternating days. Yeah. Band was Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Choir was Tuesday, Thursday, the same hour of the day. Mm -hmm. So you didn't have to pick band or choir. And yeah. if you weren't in them, you had a study hall. Well, yeah. Everybody was in both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Probably. No, uh, well, not a, no. You had a lot Half of the same them. people yeah. that did the same, that yeah. were in band and choir, and then some weren't in either, yeah. but yeah. It, it, was, it was an option. If you well, the, the stupidest thing that I think really was that burning Chisago City's bonfire. I remember the bonfire was below Lakeside School, and uh, I was standing by where the co-op station, yep. with a group of people, and when they lit the fire, I, d I didn't realize that gasoline exploded like that. <laughs> now you know. I mean, it's like, boom. It's I mean, a bomb. It, it, was, it was a bomb yeah, and it, it flew up, you know, it just blew up, the, you know, the sky was all lit up. Dangerous. I really didn't realize, I mean, again, I never was going to go sprinkle however many gallons of gasoline, but talk about a dangerous Ooh. thing oh, yeah. to do. And you did it the night before they were. It, yes. was, it, was, it was the... Their homecoming would have been Friday, and we did it Friday morning. In the morning, early morning. Three o'clock like in the morning. Yeah. Oh, two at three a.m. Gotcha. I mean, that was that was dangerous and foolish, and uh, I think it was a bad idea. But well, here was uh, a bad idea, but it was very fun. Uh, we always dressed up as high school kids for Halloween, and they used to deputize lots of men for Halloween to go out and. Of course, our goal as kids is to get the cops to chase us. Uh, we're on foot. We taped our ankles. We take athletic tape from the from the school and taped our ankles because we're running across fields and we don't want to sprain our ankles. We know we're going to get them to chase us. Well, one of the ones Bad boys. that was funny was <laughs> Ned Froberg and Donny Klein jumped on top of what was then the municipal liquor store yeah. next to what used to be the fire barn there. And they were right next to each other, and the fire barn had the old bell on top of the fire barn. So they hooked up a fishing line to the bell and then ran it across Highway 8. And then we sat in the alley across from Highway 8, and we'd pull that fishing line, ring that bell. The guys would come out of the municipal liquor store, and they'd look up and they'd look around, they kept going all over. They'd go back in, we'd ring it again. Then they went up on the roof. <laughs> and they're, we're sitting across the street just having a gay time, just <laughs> laughing and laughing. <laughs> and, uh, but nobody ever saw us do it, and we never got chased for that one. But we and did. Now um, they know. Now they know. <laughs> yeah. who, who was the town cop? Cla Clarence? Chester no, Larson. Chester Larson. Chester. I knew it started with the C. The guys yeah. were terrible to Chester. They it were. was just oh, like Mayberry. Right. It, was, it was Barney. Yeah. They set yeah. off firecrackers on one end of town and then beat it out of there and then here comes Chester and their yeah, guys are all yeah. gone and they were yeah. just... We never destroyed property, no. never had any interest in it. No, all no. we wanted to do is get somebody to chase us yeah. and then run away. Well, my, my bad one that I remember is I, I went with a group of foolish teenagers, girls and boys, and we would steal watermelon and, that, and we got shot at. I mean, Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. I mean, you running away from the watermelon patch with this guy, farmer, shooting at you. Yeah. Ooh. Well, I, I assume it wasn't, I mean, it was like something. I have something no idea. Nobody got hit. It I don't know what he was using. Yeah. In the air. We didn't, the, he missed. He anyway. was shooting in the air. Yeah. Scare you off. I don't know. <laughs> but it was Mary, not did right. Did you do any pranks? I did can't you observe any pranks? I, I can't think. Uh, the thing in school, I can remember we could 
crawl out the girls' bathroom window to get on the roof of the building, as for in school. Otherwise, no, I was a good girl. I can't, <laughs> I never was up down to have Chester chase me. But, um, we used to break into the school. Uh, yeah, the and I can remember they'd have to come up there and rebels. I know. Yep. We used those same windows up above the yeah. roof to get into the uh, school and then walk into the gymnasium to shoot baskets oh, on sure. weekends. And, yeah. uh, you know, again, we didn't do any harm. We just yeah, wanted to shoot a, baskets. The gym wasn't open, so. Yeah. 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 How about you, Diane? You, you said I have to uh, go with Marsha's um, stealing water fashion. Yeah. Did the same thing. Mm -hmm. A different time. Mm -hmm. Different group, but yes. I, should we rat out who? We <laughs> no, we'll leave it right there. All right. <laughs> There was another little challenge on the class trip, but I better not rat him out either. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> it was a fun time to be a kid. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was the best, best of times. Mm -hmm. Small town. One of the worst things we did in retrospect, though, was driving fast. And with those hot cars back at that time, there was oh. a lot of fast driving. Drag races. And yeah. Dra not well, so much drag races. Too fast. Just yeah. driving fast. I remember we drove to... Uh, I can't remember who the driver was. I think Mike Gatton, the classmate of George's, was a driver. We drove to the north branch of the golf course. Yep. They, we'd have our own car, and, and then the coach, uh, Roger Adair, was the golf coach, would follow. I remember Mike drove so fast, <laughs> the golf coach, he couldn't keep up. I mean, Mike was just way ahead of him. But that was normally how, we, how the people drove to north branch. Yep. And uh, so when we got out at the golf course, <laughs> the coach, he starts yelling at Mike, he kicks him in the rear end because he said, I, you, you drove so fast that uh, I couldn't keep I up. I couldn't even see you. I couldn't even see you. Well, that's the way we typically the people drove. Yeah, yeah it was terrible. It, it was, it was no. not good. No. You didn't. No, they didn't. <laughs> that, Typical. that was just you guys. That wasn't Could most, have been. most people. Well, no. I don't it was know. A well, it was, <laughs> a it it was most, most boys at that time. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> most boys at that time. Having the hot car and using that horsepower was fun. Where did you get the money for the cars? Yeah. It worked. It was their parents' car some of the time. I mean, I had a lot of money when I graduated from high school. I had like $5,500 saved up when I graduated from high school because I worked enough. You worked all the time. And you talked about hay. I used to go hay for the Except farmers. Except he didn't work all the time because he was in three sports at one time. <laughs> yeah, I did, I, I did a lot of everything. I was busy. Yeah. You but hay, we did that, clean barn for farmers and anything to make a buck. Yeah. And that's... The, that's what most guys did. They did, it, did something, worked at the way. holiday yeah, station, right. worked for a farmer, worked for their parents, did you whatever. Did drive in around? Or oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, the A&W down. Mm -hmm. The A&W is where holiday is now in Lindstrom. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. That was definitely a gathering point in the summer. It was for the kids in their cars. That's yeah. true. Mm -hmm. Pull up, it was the speakers to order yeah. your mm -hmm. food. Yeah. and So you'd go to the A&W and have something to eat, and then what are we going to do? And then you'd figure it out from yeah. there, and off you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you ever have school assemblies where someone would come in some face? Yes. Oh, yes. Yep. Lyceums. Lyceum. Oh, mm -hmm. and the Globetrotters. <laughs> Did you have the Globetrotters? I, yes. I, yes. Wow. I think I remember that. I don't remember yeah, that. They were great. Yeah. I don't remember anyone famous coming to the school, but they did some interesting things. Yeah, they had scientists, and sometimes yeah. they'd have dance troops or some kind of uh -huh. arts thing. Yeah. And they were interesting. Yeah, the Lyceums were usually really, really good. Where were they held? The like gymnasium. The auditorium. Our, our gymnasium was built, you know, as a uh, uh, WPA project uh, with uh, uh, seats on a ramp up and the stage kind of elevated down, down below those. And then a balcony above, and so it worked as a theater and a gymnasium. I've got a picture here of multi purpose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Very cool. Oh, yeah. that's a great picture. It is. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. That's Dorothy Sundberg there. Oh, oh yes. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Don Bonham told the story and he said that Ethel Montgomery insisted that the new school would have a real theater. So yes. She it, wouldn't put, and that no more plays would be put on in a gymnasium. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, that's a that, tremendous that, addition that, yeah. when that you get that. was a challenge for her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Because you had to pull all those curtains oh, behind. Yes. And, yeah. Yeah. This room actually is the Ethel Montgomery Theater. Right? Oh. oh. Yeah, they see her name outside okay. in the hallway, isn't it? She was a sweetheart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was. They also, you know, we we also would have pep fists. 
Yes. Oh, yeah. In oh, the yes. gymnasium. Before yeah. a game. So that's Before when the cheerleaders would teach the students the cheers. Yep. Cheers, yeah. So and you, then the student body would practice the cheers if they'd have a new cheer and yep. they'd go on and they'd talk about the upcoming game and what was going on and yep. play the school song. And they also at those events would, for us, talk about how you behaved for the national anthem. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's one of the things that was really drilled into us was you were at attention, take you know, take off your hats, absolutely, no hats indoors, mm -hmm. ever. Okay. And, uh, and really respect for the flag and, and for the national anthem. Of course, coming off of World War II, patriotism was yeah. continued to be real strong through the 50s mm -hmm. and on up into the 60s and it got a little dicey during the Vietnam War years but uh, we were taught that and it, it really it's how we learned how to behave and learn how to mm -hmm. sing the national anthem mm -hmm. and we used to sing the or say the Pledge, Pledge of Allegiance, of Allegiance. Yeah, that in the morning oh, yeah. we all had flags in our classrooms. Well, we still yeah. did that when I was teaching okay. too mm -hmm. in elementary school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The high school used to uh, do that I don't think it was every day, but it was at least once a week where yeah. they'd come on the intercom yeah. and everybody would okay. stand in their class and do the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. Remember oh. that, kid? Yeah. Yeah. George is a little younger than me. So <laughs> just a little. <laughs> okay, so one, more, little. one more thought is, it is just necessarily have to do with high school, but your high school years. Lindstrom was a pretty thriving town. What was Delta? Oh. I mean, you guys lived on you, you pretty much had, it, it was... The rainbow, the shoe store, the men's clothing you had, store, you had two the car department dealers. store. Two car dealers. Chevy mm -hmm. and Ford, yeah. Cohen two car Chevrolet. dealers, I mean, you... Bait they sold store. The meat market, the bakery. Drug bait store. Bait store, yeah. Bait store, drug store. Furniture store. There were multiple store. clothing stores. Two, 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 at least two clothing stores. Skinners. Three. Three. Hardware, Girls, listen, two hardware stores. sold televisions and and uh, appliances, washers and dryers. Magnuson's furniture store had, Next yeah, you know, that's living room. And uh, women's stores, they had Skinners, Skinners, Skinners and Pandora. And Pandora. Two, oh, Fesky's was men's clothing. Well, Fesky's was shoes. Oh, oh Fesky's shoes. shoes. And then Andrews, Andrews was clothing. the men's clothing. Yeah. And then later you had Swenson's. And That's right. And then Carlson's department store had, had everything. Everything. Had everything. You could buy well, clothing was a little cheaper. You could buy material to sew with. And was it? Needle threads. Well, and the five and dime. What, what, what ben, Franklin. ben Franklin. Ben Franklin. Yeah. And you had one grocery store. Two, no, two. Oh, there we was had, two. We, we had, had community market. And yeah, you had, community market had groceries yeah. too. Later you had Headbirds, but earlier before that we had, had more. We had Fairway and uh, oh, yeah. Roy Horton had a grocery store. Oh, yeah. We had at least three. Yeah. The mm -hmm. whole. At, at and two time. hardware stores. Two yeah. hardware coast stores. Coast, coast, coast from uh, hardware yeah. and coast to coast. Mm -hmm. What about bars? Just the, the municipal. Just the municipal. Well, you had well, you had that, but you had two, three, two, three, two, two yeah. places. Yeah. The pool hall. Uh, pool pool hall. Kenny Abrahamson had pool where pool the Swedish Inn is now yep. in Lindstrom, and then you had Leo Henriksen had next to the municipal liquor store. And the Rainbow Cafe had half. But Henriksen's was bait and beer, right? No. <laughs> Leo? Sure, he sold bait. Well, he, he, sure. Maybe. Out the back, back he had that sure. little... Uh, he had that little but shack. But the Rainbow Cafe had the driver. restaurant on one side and it had beer on the other side. Nobody oh, remembers that. We forgot, the, we forgot about the Adam Inn, that little restaurant. Did they sell beer? No, no. But I you had a mean, bowling restaurant. Alley too? Yep. Yes. Well, where, where the community, community education is, was yeah. the bowling alley. Up by the cemetery? Uh -huh. yeah. That was the bowling alley. So from a shopping district standpoint, you didn't really ever have to go out of Lindstrom to oh, buy you anything to you needed. To get anything? No, mm -hmm. you really didn't. No. And for gas stations, you had Ray Nelson had uh, uh, <laughs> Phil, he had some kind of gas there. Standard, I think. And then you had Russ Johnson had Philip sixty six. Then Cohn Chevrolet had Standard Oil. Corey cool. had Shell. Mm -hmm. He had Holiday. I can name at least five gas stations. Mm -hmm. And Prior, down in front of the Opera House, that was, was the pure oil. Pure oil. Yep. And Mobile was, was where uh, uh, Mobile is where Lindgren uh, now bean counters were. Right. Yeah. Right. So there you, was there one were there. gas stations. Yeah. yeah, there were a lot. A lot of them. Wow, you had everything. Yeah. And we yeah. also would get the Sears, Roebuck, and Montgomery Ward's catalogs, so you could order and we could order mm -hmm. out of that. Yeah. Did they have a Sears store where you could? No, there was a ward store. Not though. until, not until lot later. later they had a ward store. But the, the Fairway yeah. grocery store. When I was growing up, it was just catalogs. Yeah. And Friday, Fridays and Saturday nights, uh, depending on what era you're going back to, 
the stores were open until nine. Yes. And mm -hmm. that was mainly so farmers had a chance to come in and do their shopping. Mm -hmm. And you had so many, all of, all of the areas that are housing develops now in Chisauga Lakes, they're they were all farms. farms. Yeah. A lot of 250 to 300 acre farms, mm -hmm. almost all of them dairy farms or, or beef chickens cattle farms. And chickens. chickens, they yeah. bring their eggs in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sell their mm -hmm. eggs and all. So the farmers would come in and do their shopping and, on the weekends, on right. those right. evenings. And so Unless our dad started this um, cold storage plant. You know, the farmers right. would rent a locker uh -huh. and in the beginning of frozen foods in That's 1936. Right. So people yeah. would rent a locker. Yes. Mm -hmm. the they farmers. Didn't so you had this big freezers. room with uh, lockers and keys on it. Yep. And we'd keep mm -hmm. the keys for the people. Oh. Yeah. And you could put about a quarter of a beef in a locker. I remember that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. so and it was one of the first frozen food plants. In the, oh, was it? I think yeah. it was the second yeah. in the state of second Minnesota. Of state one of Minnesota. the first. He kind Shortly of gave after. birth to that industry, yeah. and then when home freezers became so common, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, then it, it kind of waned. Yeah. And also, families got smaller. It was real common for local farmers to sell their livestock through that plant through the meat market yeah. rather than shipping in the south st paul and put it on the market so they freeze it and then sell we'd process it we'd we butcher, butcher it and butcher process it. it and freeze it yeah. so you get two two to four people that would split up on an animal you might get a quarter of a beef or a half a beef very few people would get a whole beef and then you'd say how thick do you want your steaks how many pounds do you want your roast how much hamburger to a package and on and on and on and so it was custom to and each person <laughs> you were a wrapper and stamp it and then we put it in <laughs> in the shark freezer and in metal racks and let that freeze and then load their there. lockers with with, with the, what with they the ordered job, and yeah. then so you'd have to plan ahead obviously which is hard for people to do today but the freezers are so small and there are refrigerators at home they right. yes they were just a little yeah. so they come in regularly yeah. into Get, get their, their locker meat. and what did they charge to rent a locker? So you come in on twelve dollars a month. Yeah. To rent a locker? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. We had a locker. Sure. Mm -hmm. Actually my mom. Well I know my folks yeah. bought a freezer early. They yeah. I remember them having a locker, but as soon as they could they bought it from Kaufman. Implement. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, he sure. had International Harvester and it was a big one, as long as it's stable. Huh. Chest and freezer. they butchered. I mean I was on a farm and Diane Johnson, maiden name Lundquist, and I am a 1959 graduate of Chai High. My name is Keith Victor Carlson, and I'm a 1967 graduate of Lindstrom Center City Schaefer, also known as Chai High. And my name is Marcia Smith. I was Marcia Nelson, and uh, I'm a graduate from the class of 1960 of Chai High. I'm George Nelson. I'm a 1968 graduate of Chai High. I'm Mary Nelson Schmitz, and I graduated in 1947 from Chai High. Hail, alma mater, hear thy children sing. Praise the glory to the honor of thy name we sing. Ra, ra, ra. Hail, alma mater, we will then be true. Fighting and striving to uphold the honor of the gold and blue. V I C T O R Y, victory, victory, is shy high. <laughs>